This is a Coleman KT196 go-kart, but the big question I see all over the internet is, can you put a bigger engine in it? Yes! But will a Predator 301 fit? Some people suggest it'll bolt right in, but there's no photos nor video evidence of who, where, nor how. So by the end of this video, we're going to find out, and if this Predator 301 doesn't fit in this KT196, we're gonna make it fit. So please stay tuned. All right, down the back side here, you can see the 196 engine that's installed, which is very similar to a Predator 212. It's detuned just a little bit. A 212 does make just a little bit more power. But this engine's coming out and going to be replaced with this one. This is a Predator 301. It took me a little while to figure that out because it's missing all the labels from having been weathered for a while. But with the help of the HIPAA store, we got this sucker running. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this engine and put it in there. This one makes about 50% more power, even in stock configuration. And I've got a bunch of gee dunks and bells and whistles to upgrade it as well. But thankful once again to the HIPAA store for helping me to get this engine running. So before we continue on, let's go ahead and talk about the HIPAA store. You have seen HIPAA store parts helping to resurrect two different KT196 go-karts, as well as this Predator 301 engine that we will be working on today. Just who is the HIPAA store, you say? Well, the HIPAA store is a company that sells parts for lawnmowers and other outdoor power equipment. And since go-karts also have a lot of the same parts, that means the HIPAA store also has a lot of parts for some go-karts. We are very thankful to the HIPAA store for helping us out on all of our small engine related needs. It's grass cutting season again, and what that means is you better check your mowers because now's the time to stock up on parts. This month, the HIPAA store is running a big $9.90 two for sale. That's right. Items that are on sale for $9.90 will include a second one for the price of zip point nothing. Buy one, get one free. I'm not sure how they're doing this, but hurry up and act now before HIPAA decides to change their minds. Check out the HIPAA store affiliate links down below in the video description, and know that when you support HIPAA, you're also supporting my YouTube channel. Special thanks again to the HIPAA store for sponsoring this video. Welcome back everybody to another exciting Duckman Cycles and Air Cooled Garage. I'm your host, Lord Duckman. And behind me here we have my two go-karts. This is the KT196 that you guys watched me build over the last year. That I built it so that way I can fit my normal sized body in there. It was pretty much intended for children and small people. <laughs> So anyway, I built it up and I've been getting asked a lot of questions. Hey, Duckman, are you going to continue to do any work with this thing or are you just going to abandon it or sell it or get rid of it? And I thought about selling it for a little while, but the fact is with the bigger go-kart now, if I want to play with David at David's house and run around his little track, that thing would just cream him and makes no sense. But this little KT196 is highly competitive. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to give it an upgrade. All right, I went ahead and I pulled the footprint from the Harbor Freight manual as to where the four bolts bolt in to make this engine mount. And then I pulled up the footprint to the 196 and I discovered that the bolts, the width of them, this way and this way, the maximum width, because one of the holes is slotted, is the same as the minimum width on this engine. So we might actually get two of the bolts to line up, but why only two? That's because the length from front to back, the bolts on this engine are much further apart uh, than what you see on here. So if I'm going to use the same engine mounting plate, I'm going to have to either make some new holes or perhaps um, change how things mount. I don't exactly know how yet, but I do know for a fact that the case on this is a lot bigger. So where the rear pulley mounts, and you can see that cylinder shaped thing, that's where the shaft goes through that, that's probably going to need to be eliminated because the engine, this one, will not clear that. And unfortunately, I can't push the engine forward because the swing arm pushes the engine into the, the frame. So yeah, the engine has to be right about where it is and no further forward than that because if I hit a good size bump or something, yeah, the engine actually will clash with the frame. So what we're going to do today is we're first going to take the engine off of here, remove it from the mounting plate. Then we're going to set up the clutch and such on this and get this thing removed from here. And then we'll see if we can get them to adapt to each other and get the chains to line up. And if everything goes well from there, I actually have a new chain ordered for this thing because the chain snapped on it last week. So we're going to replace all that too. Well, anyway, uh, I guess it's time to jump into this thing and start tearing some stuff apart. Oh yeah, and the new chain already has a flaw in it. Look at that. It's the only link that I see it stamped that way, but there is one link that was on it that was a different color. 
Yeah, I don't see it. There's your master. And it was one link on there. It's a different color. Maybe it's just the way the light was hitting. I don't see it now, but anyway, <laughs> we're good to go. Anyway, I went to mount this Comet CVT on here, and the first thing I noticed is that when I put it on, and I got the bolts in it, that it would not mount anywhere near the engine. It apparently is not designed to mount onto this particular type of engine, not because the engine's uh, too much power or anything like that, rather because it uh, just doesn't clear properly. And when I looked at it a little more closely, I discovered why, and it's because on the back side of it, where I ground it down, there was an extra webbing that came through here. So I had to take the webbing out, and then I had to cut into this a little bit. So it's, it's got a flat spot on it. It's not completely round on the outside. I may have taken a little strength away from it, and I'm told these plates explode anyway. But much to my surprise, when I looked at a Chinese plate, look at that, it's already clearanced. So the China has already figured that out. Well, they already figured it out and they clearanced that out. So this China plate would probably work, but as you see, there's a couple cuts that I put in it. And that's because I clearanced it for another project that I've been working on for the past year that you guys don't know anything about yet. I'll reveal the video to that coming up in the future, but uh, it was kind of interesting to see that Comet didn't have that clearance, and that this whole chunk is bigger than it is here in the Chinese one. So if I used this plate, I probably wouldn't have had to have done that. So if you get one of those um, TAV30 CVT transmissions from uh, Amazon, links down below in the video description, this one would probably fit on this engine. So let's go ahead and get the sucker mounted. Hi, Cheeky. You came to see Daddy? Oh, good girl. I see. You're getting harassed here by him, huh? Yeah, Icebox is after you. He likes you. He likes you. Yes, he does. But you're my girl, I know. Cheeky doesn't have a mate, so I keep reminding her that uh, she's my girl, and I always run the other roosters off, so I think she, she kind of realizes it at this point. <laughs> you lost a little feather there, buddy. Nope, trying to pull it off, but it's not broken completely yet. It's probably from him humping you, huh? And there's Frosty. Those are technically their uh, Cheeky's um, niece and nephew, although they're also brother-sister to her, too. There was a lot of incest going on here. <laughs> uh, but that's Pensacola for you. You know, we're in Lower Alabama. You really want a piece of that Cheeky, don't you? Yeah, she's sweet and beautiful, isn't she? Yes, she is. She is sweet and beautiful. And there's Mama! Everybody's coming around to see me. Mama is her mother and their grandparent. So that's how that worked out. Biddy is inside right now because Biddy's an asshole. But we'll talk about him in the future. But he attacked me while I was working out here earlier. He came up behind me when I wasn't paying any mind, completely across the yard, attacked me, put holes in my shirt, and just made me generally unhappy. So, he's not allowed to be outside today. No, he's, uh, he's in. And look what he did to Mama's back. I'm going to have to get her an apron because he ripped all of her feathers out. I know, Mama. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You're a sweet birdie. Yeah, you hurt nobody. And they're all behaving themselves. You notice how they're all quiet? It's Biddy that stirs them up. It's just Biddy. You got a weird walk, buddy. Yeah, you got a little extra motion in one of your joints. I don't know why. You're healthy. You just walk a little silly. Yes, you do. And I forgot to mention, the other thing um, that the webbing had to be removed for is because it would not clearance where the oil goes in here, where the dipstick is at. I actually had to trim off the little piece of plastic that allows me to open it. So that's gone now. In addition to that, I also trimmed off a little bit of the opening to it. I guess I took off uh, probably about a quarter of an inch. So I trimmed that down. It has threads that go a lot deeper than you might imagine, but I went ahead and threaded it all back together using that and then cut it off. And you say, well, what are you gonna do about putting oil in it, checking the oil level? Well, it's got a dipstick on the other side too. So it's really a non-issue. So that one's gonna get covered up when we put that uh, CVT plate on there. And we'll show you how that works right now. Well, to mount this plate, Real simply put, since the webbing's been removed and this has been clearanced, this is going to go into position just like this. And you might be saying, hey, why are you going to put it in that position? That's because on the KT-196, that's exactly the way it would mount. So we're going to try to emulate or copy what was already on the other cart for clearancing issues, and hopefully everything should fit. I think I'm running this into the right screw holes here. These typically have four bolts that holds a CVT plate on. And I'm told these CVT plates, um, and explode. I guess because they have torque on them and they twist and they bend and over time they just fatigue and give out. I guess we'll see if it's actually, uh, this is actually going to be one of the ones that fails. But nonetheless, it needs to be run because I'm cutting a bunch of stuff off the KT196. 
Now this is also a real Comet plate versus the uh, China one. And somebody told me it's a China ones that explode, so I don't know, maybe the Comet one will last. There we go. Make sure we're tight. That one needs a little more. Good. Okay, there's our plate installed. Now we have to put our clutch on, which mounts up front. I've already figured out the spacing on all this stuff. There was two one-inch washers which actually came with this cart. So somebody else had done some of the work before to make this stuff work. But I did have to cut a little bit off the shaft here. I had to uh, take that down a quarter of an inch because when I went to put this stuff on here, it would not um, bolt down because the clutch was too long, or too, uh, too short for the shaft rather. Yeah, that's what it was. So. This all goes on here just like this. It almost looks like I've done it before. That's because I have. This uh, little spacer that goes on the end here, I also had to run the lathe through that and uh, open the hole up on it a little bit because the bolt that goes into the shaft on this is just a little bigger than it was anticipated. And this is actually a China clutch because the original Comet clutch was left out in the weather in a bucket of water, which is where I got a bunch of the parts for this thing from the previous owner everything was just sitting out in the yard soaking wet and the clutch just rusted to pot there wasn't much left of it anymore completely ruined here we go There's our clutch that should be good and on this end we have our transmission pulley or secondary pulley this is the part that actually originally came off the KT196 I happen to have a, a Chinese one on it now that I had purchased from uh, Amazon for the other project that I was talking about earlier. That project, um, there's a washer here on the ground. This is the one that I was missing. Just noticed it now. Looking around for it, I didn't see it. It's on the ground. Hey. Anyway, yeah, I bought the uh, another CVT for the other project, so I'm going to need some parts because uh, I'm robbing from Peter to pay Paul kind of situation here. <laughs> that goes on there just like that. And yes, there's supposed to be a belt on it. I put the belts on afterwards because I have big enough hands to do it. And honestly, I don't think it's about big hands. I think anybody can do it. It's all about technique. All right, there it is. One CBT mounted. And it clears the oil fill hole. All right, that's where I was saying we had a clearancing issue. You see how close that is? <laughs> it looks like it might even be touching it, but it's not. I can actually slip a piece of paper between there. So this works out pretty damn good. And the reason why I have it pointed back like that is because that's more or less how it is here on the KT196. So yeah, pretty much the same situation. Only this one doesn't have a plate. This one actually has that steel drum where the axle is uh, welded into the chassis. So yeah, we'll be cutting some of that stuff up. Okay, well good. All right, we're done over here for the moment. Let's get the engine removed from this thing and take our next step. Oh, my back is just gonna love working on this today. And it's not because I have a bad back, and it's not because I'm old or some other nonsense that people like to say. It's just part of being so tall. When you work on things that are closer to the ground, you have to bend over a lot further than other people do. And that just ends up uh, doing its, giving its, just f***ing you up over time. And then I have issues at the end of the day or the next morning where I hurt like hell because of it. All right, well, our fuel line is off. Throttle cable is out. Our kill switch is over here too, way over here. And I'm actually going to uh, reuse this kill switch in the same format on the new 301 engine. There should be a plug socket or something sitting on the uh, chassis for the big cart that I can use. This exhaust cracked again. The one on the bolts fell out for the mount that holds it together. So I got a little frustrated with that and I haven't bothered to fix it yet, but that's why it's sitting that way. Okay, um, we got one bolt in the back here, one bolt in the front, and then the whole engine will lift right on out, along with the plate that it mounts on. And while I'm wiggling around, um, we have to knock the chain off down below also. So, all right, let me grab, yeah, grab the whole bunch of extensions because I like them. <laughs> go. Hi Cheeky. You came back to see Daddy again, huh? What a good girl you are. Yes, you are. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to this thing. This engine is going to lift up just a little bit and then that bolt will pop out. Boom, engine falls down. Now we gotta remove the other one, which is up by the swing arm. Way up in there. And here it is right there. We'll get that out next. I think it's the same size. A little tricky to get in there, but we'll get it. Okay, I have extensions. I can do anything. <laughs> I have too many extensions now. Oh, look at that, we're throwing things. I must be in a mood. <laughs> All right, I hope that's the right size too. Nope, it's not. I grabbed a 14 because I thought I might be a 14 over here and I was right. All right, here we go. Tried so hard not to drop the nut, but my nuts dropped anyway. <laughs> Hope I can hit it. Almost not. <laughs> All right, driving this out. <laughs> Back to see me right, again, huh? Down. You just got chased. Yeah, you're safe by daddy. You're always safe by daddy. Don't ever forget that. Wish Crash remembered the same thing. Always runs to me when she needs help. <laughs> Alright, back on this thing. That bolt is under here. Let's hope I can get in there and reach it. And it's out. Here it is. Well, I went to get underneath here and I discovered the chain is already off. So I didn't have to... Uh, Disconnect the master link or anything, just slopping the engine down was enough to get it to where you need to be. So this whole engine should lift right out of the swing arm now, and it'll be free. All right, one engine released. Theoretically. <laughs> there it is. Stop eating my pepper plant. Get out of there, cheeky. That's not yours. I'm trying, starting to get peppers again here, and you're eating my pepper plant. Hey, stop. Get out of there. <laughs> And Boomer comes around. Here's the exhaust the calendar from the old engine. And you see it was cracking. And that's because there was a bolt that went through here and screwed into the head and the threads pulled out of it. Those threads were never quite right anyway. I was having issues with that from the beginning. But uh, anyway, the bolt was missing and the pipe cracked. But this arm that I put on there actually was enough to stabilize it, which stopped it from cracking until of course it let go. Anyway, we're not gonna need that for the time being. All right, here we are. It's our KT196 engine and mount. This is really what we need, all this under here. And I see, uh oh, oil's dripping out, or is that fuel? No, it's fuel. Right on my brand new sheets of plywood. Oh well, I guess the shed's gonna smell like uh, gasoline, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, the bolt holes, they're not slotted. So already I can tell you that this engine is not gonna fit when I do the conversion on here. It's gonna need a little, little bit of work. But, well, we'll see exactly what we gotta do when we gotta do it. I did notice something else here, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see it looking at it this way, but this sprocket down here is not in line with the sprocket above it. It's actually on a slight angle. So this little drum down here that runs that shaft is crooked. So I need to cut that out and then weld it back in straight, or at least cut it loose and hammer it into position and then weld it straight but it's definitely not right where it's at. So that needs to be fixed. Just assembling some of this thing here. Start by taking that off, which is not the same size nut as the other one. Interesting. How about that? We need some different tools here. This clutch I can leave with the engine. There's no reason to take that off. This is a three quarter inch shaft. It wouldn't even fit on the other engine if I wanted it to anyway. So yeah, out of luck there. Okay. Well, uh, let's get some more tools. Let's take this. Ooh. Size tool. This one is what we need. Let's get this off of here. Okay. Pull that off, which minor abusive tools there. Okay. There is the chain that I started to put on, which is the wrong size, because I was a dildo. Because <laughs> I thought the chain was a 428, and I had a 428. Turns out the change is 420. Now, what's different is the 420 is also a little beefier, slightly wider, but 
It's also got bigger rollers on it, which means it doesn't fit around the sprocket teeth quite correctly. So it'll bind, and you can see it's doing that exactly right here. So that chain needs to come back off. But in order to get that chain off, we have to remove this sprocket. Because, you know, um, fighting with this chain in this tight of an area actually was a real prick. <laughs> Don't even get me started, but this is how we're going to do it. Pull the sprocket out, and as we pull, both sprockets will come out, and then we'll have that chain off. Right. This is for the YouTube dicks, the ones that like to give me a hard time about doing things or not doing things the way they want. Well, now I've got something in there so the dirt and crud doesn't fall in. Anyway, good practice. Yeah, I agree. One. This whole thing comes apart really easy. I mean, even easier than a Volkswagen. If only my tools would be cooperative. There we go. <laughs> All right, as I said, both sprockets come out at the same time, just like that. Also, our keyway came out. So we got that. Got these sprockets. Like so. Everything's out of here. Now the engine is ready to come off of that mount. I probably should unbolt this carburetor, otherwise I can see myself breaking a uh, manifold or something. Got some loose bolts here. That's well, a good thing I noticed them. Yeah. Good thing I noticed that those bolts were loose. Not that it matters anyway, because this engine's coming off, but... Okay. Underneath here, it looks like we got 10 millimeters with a 12 on top. So we got 12s right here. Yep, that's right. And underneath, it looks like a 10. That's one. Thing. Oh, we're missing a nut over here. Bolt is still there, which is a surprise, but the nut's gone. Ooh, it smells like bad gas when these bolts come out. Must have been some gas inside the uh, mount here. It looks like there's already a stud in there. It looks like it's captive. And yeah, that thing is crooked. Look at that. <laughs> it's just terrible. All right, well, we'll put a little cut on around the back side of it. Actually, you know what? It looks like the whole, uh, the whole square tube is bent. I don't know if I can stick it in a vise and hammer it straight and then just weld the reinforcement to it. That might actually be easier. Well, nonetheless, there's our mount. Now, the goal is to see if the new engine will catch this bolt. If it catches this bolt, maybe that one, maybe I only have to drill two more in here and get uh, a little piece of tube put in there and, well, then screw it down. Now, I don't know if the side-to-side -side action is going to be straight either, but we're about to find that out too. But I'm thinking that this is probably going to go away. I'll cut the welds out of it and just remove the whole damn thing because I don't think we're going to need that anymore. If I do decide to put another KT196 on here, I could just put the plate back on the side of it and eliminating that altogether. Okay, well, here it is. And here's my little eight tooth sprocket that I put on way back when. All right, cool. Wow, got dirty on that one. <laughs> all right, let's get the engine out of the big cart. This whole mount is all custom garbage. Nothing on here seems to fit quite right. That bolt wasn't even tight, was it? Washer's all mangled. <laughs> Is that bolt even gonna come out, you guy? Yeah, it actually came out. I need to put these in a basket so I don't <sighs> completely custom. <laughs> and as I've said in other videos, this is the previous, previous owner stuff. The guy that last owned it said he got it this way. I was gonna make a project out of it himself. All right, that was two bolts. There should be two more up front. I wonder if I can even record that. May not be worth it. A little tight to get in there. All right, well, we'll be back in just a minute. All right, that should get it out of there. 
It did. Yay. <laughs> you have these two engines next to each other, the 301 and the 196. You realize just how much bigger that thing is. <laughs> I mean, ignore all the clutch plate and stuff and the huge air box that's on there, but just the, the size of the block, it's just so much bigger. Even the size of the valve cover on there. This is a Hemi. This is just your standard uh, head on here. Um, yeah, quite a significant difference in size. Anyway, they're both out. There's our engine mounting plate. Cross your fingers, guys. I guess we're about to see what's going to happen. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to knock that shaft out for starters. That's and I'm going to have to hammer it that shaft out of here. If you're ever going to bang on something like that, you want to make sure you put the nut on because you don't want to mangle the threads on the end of it. But Yeah, that made it come through. wonder if it's going to go through all the way. Guess we're about to see. Yeah, now I have to bang on it without the nut. We'll be gentle. Yeah, it's coming out. I think I brought a punch out of here too. Yeah, from earlier. Let's see if we can knock this thing out the rest of the way. No! It's rounded, not square. <laughs> Boing! Alright, now that shaft's not going to be in the way. But still, this cylindrical thing here, it's going to have to be cut off, I presume. Alright. Let's see if it mounts on the bottom of this engine. And I'm wondering what's going to be the best way to do this. I'm thinking probably lay the engine up on its side. Um, I don't want oil to leak out of it. The breather tube is here. I don't know if there's another breather in the case anywhere. Well, I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? <laughs> Alright, it's up. Here's our mount. Alright. Looks like... Yeah, we caught the bolts, but when I put the sprocket on, it's out of alignment with the other sprocket here. There's a couple different ways I can fix that. One is to, well, mount the engine properly. In other words, skeech it over to one side and make it work, or lengthen the shaft. I think it actually might be easier just to move the engine. That's probably what we're going to do. Yeah, I'll just move where the bolt holes are in this thing and change it up a little bit. Nothing that the duck man can't do. <laughs> Alright, well this is good. Good news. Otherwise, this thing does fit on this arm. So it will fit in the cart otherwise. Without changing too much else. In fact, there's enough room on here. You might even be able to put a, a bigger engine. And when this thing goes away, it's also going to be nice because... The drain plug will be accessible from the rear in a place that makes sense. They never build these things that they make sense. It's a shame that the dipstick's going to be in a hard-to-reach location, but the rest of it's going to make sense. Just another angle right, for well, you guys to see. Good news. Right now, that one bolt or stud that was actually welded into this uh, frame is in the first bolt hole. And you can see right away, there's our sprocket, there's our sprocket out of alignment. Almost an inch and a half out of alignment. You can also see that this sprocket is tipped that way. Again, that was the problem where this whole thing is not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> We're going to correct that for sure. What I need to do is I need to probably get another piece of square tube and run it down the side over here and drill holes in it and that way I can get those bolts mounted and then somewhere around here we'll drill a hole and run that one through. But what I might wind up doing is taking this completely off and well once this drum is out of the way getting the sprockets to line up like that and you see now none of our bolt holes are caught so what I'll do is I'll just build a little um, well, I could probably just use a piece of steel plate and just weld it in or just bolt it in directly using the existing mounts that are already here and make it work that way. There's a lot of different options I've got here. I guess I should look around and see if I got any steel plate like that. I think I do. You know what? That's going to be the best way because you know what that means? That means when everything is said and done, if I take this back apart, I can put the KT196 engine back on. So yeah, steel plates is going to be the answer then. Okay, I'll cut out a piece of steel plate, get holes drilled into it, get holes drilled into here, I'll weld bolts onto it, so that way I can drop it into place and then bolt it into stock bolt holes, and get everything mounted and located that way. That's going to be great. Yeah, that's going to be really good. Okay, I'm excited for that. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you.
Whoop. Ow! Alright. Much better. It's a shame I had to cut that stud off of there. But, I can drill it and weld a new one in, so no big deal. All right, before I did anything else, I cut out half the welds around here. So now that sprocket is now perpendicular to this platform. So it's straight up and down, as opposed to that goofy curve that it had before. So yeah, fixed. That's good. I just gotta get in there and weld it solid again, but no worries. I wanna take out all the bushings and stuff in here first. Not bushings. Um, Seals. There's bearing seals and stuff in here. I want to take that out because otherwise they're gonna melt. And I'll be replacing a whole bunch of more bushings and bearings and anything that has a seal on it of any sort. It might cost me 30, 40 bucks. 30, 40 bucks I don't want to have to spend. So let's not. You two are humping again. Mounting plate in the and back is, here. And then I dropped the 301 on top of it just to see what it would look like. Right now I've got the sprockets lined up. So this is where the chain is going to fall. And it looks pretty good. It looks like it's sitting up a little high, but the chain adjusters are also as tight as they can be right now because I had that smaller sprocket on the front there, which forced me to uh, tighten the chain up a little extra. But otherwise, the engine doesn't look unusually big. It would probably pass off as a stock 196. <laughs> if anybody didn't know any better. Everything seems to clearance pretty good. And for whatever it's worth, the... Uh, Dipstick actually looks like it's easier to reach for some reason. I don't know why it looked harder before with the other engine in there Well, one thing's for sure. I, I moved the engine back a little bit too Just a little bit back because I wanted a little more clearance between the uh, the tank mount castings that are on here and the frame Because what would happen before on the 196 is it would hit here But this is taller now so when it moves it's actually going to go over it. Yeah, so it's it's not even gonna come near it So this is okay where it's at I don't see any reason I'd want to change it. That should be good. Now it's just a matter of making the mechanical mounts and then cutting a chain long enough and then doing the throttle cable, a little bit of electrical work, which is just two wires. <laughs> it's really one wire, but it's two wires because the switch has it in and then out. And then I'll find a connector for this that fits this somewhere on this chassis. I thought I had seen some in the turn signals or something. Yeah, something is. There's connectors like that somewhere on this chassis. I'll just cut them out and use them. And that will solve that problem. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. And I think it just about passes off for a stock KT196. <laughs> All right, I cut me out an engine mounting plate from some what looks to be quarter-inch steel. This stuff is heavy. It came out of uh, some building strapping that they use for building, you know, stilt-type houses and stuff. Typically the kind of stuff you see down at down at the beach <laughs> here in Pensacola. Anyway, here's our plate. We'll get this on here, figure out where our markings are, and then we'll transfer this over to the existing mount, and we'll f figure out where the holes are gonna be for that, and then start running in some bolts and weld in some studs, because I want the plate to just drop into place and then bolt in, and then drop the engine on it and then bolt it in. So that way it makes it nice and easy so you don't fumble around with bolts, and also it makes the top of the plate nice and flush. I think that's kind of critical here to make everything work properly. Okay. I just nice. put Biddy back outside, so if you hear Rooster crowing, it's probably him starting trouble. And if he's too much trouble, he got his brother started. But if he's too much trouble, I'm just going to put him back in because it's nice having quiet videos. Anyway, we got this sprocket straightened out on here. You can see it's nice and perpendicular to this now. This weld in here was all screwed up. The uh, square tube that's here. The square tube that's here was actually twisted a little bit, so I guess I compensated for it by just cutting the welds and bending it up and then filling it back in. But we have an eight tooth sprocket that I had on here previously. This is a stock 10 tooth. This gave me 20% uh, more torque, which really felt good with somebody of my weight. But since the engine now produces 50% more torque as it is, I can put the 10 tooth back in and that means higher top speeds. And we're gonna test that at the end of this video because that's the goal here. Let's see if we can get this thing done. Because that's the goal here. Let's see if we can get this thing done. Anyway, this sprocket goes back on here. Make sure we got our keyway on there. These are uh, a little, a little dickish to get them started. A 
in this bolt if I can get the threads caught. Nope, it didn't. I need a little more force. There we go. So if you can get the threads started on it, it'll go right in. What's going on here? Oh, I see what happened. We need to give it a couple more wax. And then this came out. That needs to go back in. Now it'll catch. Barely. I don't want to try to force it in if it's only going to catch a couple threads because you know what that's going to do? It's going to strip the damn thing out. Alright, here we go. Hopefully this will pull everything together without stripping it out or breaking off the bolt. Yeah, I see it pulling that in, pulling the sprocket. I think it's in. I guess we'll just make sure. Did it move? Nope, sure didn't. All right, it's tight. It's in there. Okay, let me show you the engine mount I've been working on. First, I cut this, as you saw, out of this um, bracket or brace or whatever the hell I use for construction. It's nice quarter inch steel. This also, the remains of it happened to make a great stand for this. But this plate, you notice it's got five holes, one, two, three, four in each corner, the one way over here. There's three studs sticking out of it because I couldn't have any nuts sticking out the top of this thing when I mount the engine down. So I welded them in around here, around the tops, and then ground them kind of flush. They were a little high, but the bottom of that engine has contours and, you know, there's, there's dents and shapes and valleys. So as long as it wasn't a nut standing up on it, it actually cleared it just fine. But these three studs go right in there just like that then I've got this flathead screw here which might seem kind of weird but this has a nice flat you know very beveled head on it so when I put this engine down I can actually uh, clear everything and that goes in this fourth hole that's way over here and the reason why I didn't just run a bolt or a stud in is because well the sprockets right here there's no way to get a nut down in the other side of it so this goes in through the top I can just Run this sucker right in. Just like that. Good. As long as there's a bolt in there, I suppose it doesn't matter too much. It's not going to come out. I mean, it can't come out. The engine's going to be on it. So there's no way that it's going to come out. Alright, the other bolts got to go in. These are... These studs were actually made from the uh, stock... Stock KT196 engine mounting bolts. So if I ever put the KT196 engine back in, you know what I'm going to have to do, right? I'm going to have to get a new set of bolts. <laughs> there we go. You know what? Before I go any further, I'm seeing there's going to be a little bit of an issue here. So when it comes time to put that chain on, it's going to be a little bit of a problem to get it routed around this bolt. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it off. I might as well do the same to the others. I see no reason for them to be that long. All right, well, we'll take those down before we get this engine mounted up on this plate. And boy, that plate added a lot of weight to this thing. Quarter-inch steel is heavy. Gotcha. All right, much better. Look at that. All them bolts are all trimmed down now. I got one plate mounted on the KT196 engine frame. The center line of the vehicle by the way is right here so technically this engine the new engine will balance right on the center line whereas this the old engine was off to the left which was kind of a goofy thing maybe that's why that was twisted because the engine would kind of lever itself over so for whatever it's worth I guess a little bit of extra weight on that side will make it less likely to twist and for whatever it's worth maybe that's why this thing twisted or turned who's to say could have just been put on crooked by the China people that built it, so I don't know. Anyway, there it is. Just like we did earlier. We should be able to hopefully get the bolt holes lined up. Yep, looks like it's gonna be good. Okay. These bolt holes, I drilled them a little big on purpose, so that way there's just a little bit of play in them, which gives me a little bit of room to be able to wiggle things around. If in the event I do have some kind of a fitment issue, oh boy, looks like we already have a fitment issue. I can't get the bolt in from the underside. Well, you know what? It could go in from the top side, couldn't it? 
does not have to go in from the bottom. I hope everything lines out. I hope everything lines up. I didn't. Uh, I did not do a dry run before hitting the record button. <laughs> so you guys are learning this the same as I'm learning it. If there's a problem or fitment issue, then I'm gonna know it now. Oh nope, the fourth bolt just went in. Okay, well that's good. That's good. I said I did drill the holes out a little big. Mm. Okay, come on. Can't get my fingers under here. Duck me fingers are too big. Alright, good. And then it's a really hard to reach one which goes in behind the sprocket here. This is a really tight, tight area. This is a really snug spot up here to be working. Ow. I think I found a metal splinter. I have to find that one later in my finger somewhere. Alright. These nuts and bolts are all 14 millimeters, so. Give me back my socket. You thief! <laughs> Good. I got this one over here. Good. Hold my wrench. The last one is the trouble one. Can I even get in there? No. Oh. Oh. Okay, I think we're going to need two wrenches for that. One this way. Yep. And then one from the top. All right, let me grab another right, 14. This one's the tricky one. I don't even know if you guys can see it, but it's way back in here. Yeah, you can see it up in there. And it's got the other wrench on the bottom. So this should work out just fine. Cause I had no trouble getting them finger tight. <laughs> Would have been nice if I could have powered it, but you know, figures can't be choosers, right? I'm just glad a tool fit in there at all. Otherwise, I would have been welding in another captive bolt, right? That actually wouldn't have been such a bad idea, though. Yeah. All right, good. Let go of my wrench. Let go of my wrench. That's stuck. I have no idea why that wrench is stuck. That's weird because it's like loose but stuck. All right. Now we're gonna have to fight with that one. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> this engine and its mount are now ready to go in the cart. But you know, before we do that, we gotta cut a custom chain for it anyway. And this uh building building bracket or whatever the hell they call these things is wobbly so this isn't the best thing necessarily to uh, stand the engine up on it's not that the engine is heavier on one side it's just that this thing is it's it's not square it's lifted on the one side and one side happens to be the side that faces me so that's why it feels like that anyway I'm gonna pull this off we got to get a chain to go around to the uh, primary and then once that's done uh, this is going to be a custom chain. We're going to put the stock chain back on down below because that's how it fits. I have brand new chain for everything, so we're going to cut brand new chain for everything. And well, we'll go from there, so okay. let's hit it. On this chain here, it's good and tight, which is something you could not do on the KT-96. Was, that was one thing you couldn't do on the KT-196 was tighten the primary chain. Whatever length it was, was what it was because everything was welded in solid. Seeing as how the CVT is now part of the engine, and I made the bolt holes big enough that I had a little bit of play back and forth. I could actually tighten up this chain right here, and <laughs> I should keep it tight. And once it loosens up, it starts to break in. I have the ability to loosen it up and move it forwards and back once again. Now this is my chain breaker here. This is the one I showed earlier in the video. And this thing is pretty stout. It's 
uh, it works better than some of the other ones that I've had. Biddy got the damn rooster started again. Everybody's crowing. Wish there was an easier way to do this. Be nice if there was a, a, a tool that attached to my drill or something. That would be cool. Maybe that's what I need to do is put one on an impact. Or maybe even just weld a little nut on the end here. And that would be pretty awesome. All right, now which pin did I push out? That one. Okay, this should be the chain, the secondary chain. This is the one that goes from this axle underneath here, the jack shaft, over to the axle proper. Double check and make sure they're the same length so I didn't make any mistakes. Nope, it looks like we're good to go. I got a master link right over here. All right, and this has to go around the axle first. And then it has to go around the jack shaft up underneath there. So, the next step is actually going to be to get the engine mounted. How about that? Pretty impressive. I also have to put the, uh, the secondary drive and the belt has to go back on, but you need to put a belt on with clean hands. Can't use greasy hands on that belt, you'll just mess it up. All right, here comes the motor. There you go. nice that it's not particularly heavy, but it is heavier than the KT-96's original engine. Uh, we're bound up on something. Oh, it went in crooked here. There we go. Got to bring the front end first and then drop the rear end in. All right, here we go. Putting in the bolts. Putting in the bolts. And I dropped the nut over here. Okay. This one can get tightened now. Let's see here. Put that right in there. Like that. back can be a little tricky to put in because I have gravity working against me here. I gotta lift it up and slide it in. Eh, actually, that wasn't too bad this time around. Guess I've done it enough times now, huh? <laughs> Get on there. there we go. All right. Now I have to loosen the tensioners here and then get the axle chain installed, which is now nice and straight since I fixed all that stuff. Very Man, nice. you finally did it. Guess what an impact can do? An impact can strip a bolt. Well, it didn't strip it. It actually broke it off, despite me being as careful as I was. I noticed that sprocket wasn't on the shaft all the way, so I started tightening the bolt and it kept creeping over tighter, 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 and then finally when it tightened as far as it needed to go, the damn impact broke it right off. Entirely my fault. Should have been a little more careful than that. But anyway, um, that means I gotta replace that shaft. Uh, I might be able to drill and tap it, I'll try, but that's not what we're doing today. Uh, it's pressed on as far as it's gonna go right now. Which means I just might get a test ride out of it, and that'll be enough yeah, to make right, me happy. That whole at least the bolt breaking off thing purple. really has me annoyed. But what are you gonna do, right? Mistakes were made, and now I have to pay for the problem. <laughs> Good news is the shaft like that isn't very expensive, and that's if I can't drill it out and tap it. I might be able to. But now we're hooking up the fuel line. All right, run. Fuel is currently on. Turn the fuel on up here. Should see the air bubbles go through. 
All right, give that just a moment. And it should be ready to start, even though we don't have the belt on yet and we don't have the run switch or the throttle hooked up, but uh, we're gonna get to that in just a moment. Go, let's see if it runs, ready? Got our choke on, got our fuel on, and ooh, you know what? I haven't put the exhaust on and it still has a piece of paper towel shoved in there, so Cheeky's over there, it's about to scare the crap out of her. Put my exhaust back on. I don't want to listen to that noise. <laughs> Let's use the impact and break another bolt. <laughs> Oops. Shite. Goes there. The impact won't fit on the other bolt. But I do have an Allen key that will. What happened here? Uh, oh, damn it. Allen keys at all. Never been a fan. It's already spinning around inside the bolt. Piece of shit. Hate these things. Cap screw my asshole. Bullshit. All right. All right. Now it should start up nice and quiet. is from my mini chopper that I used to have which is the same engine that happens to be in a doodle bastard that was all the extra wires that I didn't need because it had all lighting turn signals all that crap but it happens to have the very same plug-in that's on here which means I don't have to take anything off of the other engine or modify anything for that matter and I could just use these wires that's it splice this right onto the engine and the other one would go to ground as you know, that's how the that's how the kill switch works. It works by literally shorting out the coil. You don't usually see that on automobiles or really anything. Shorting something out. That's a big no-no, but in the case of these little things with a magneto, it actually just stops the coil from firing. <laughs> and it doesn't stay that way long enough because, of course, the engine stops running for anything to burn up. So anyway, let's get the sucker hooked up. thought I heard a go-kart coming. Not at all what I got. That's not something you see every day. Towing a bicycle and a weed whacker. <laughs> Under here is our wiring. There it is, our connector. I just dug out. Here's where the blue wire, which goes into our coil. That's the junction right there with some shrink wrap. And then the green one, also happens to be the green one in the harness, um, goes directly to ground. So what that should do, and yes, I will put this in a loom and wrap it up later, but for now, it's just gonna hang out right there. Uh, this should make this run switch work. So if you remember correctly, 
up is on and down is off. So we'll put it up. It should start. When I hit that down, it should go off. Right, Cheeky? You shouldn't be there. <laughs> it's about to get noisy. Yeah, it's about to get real noisy, little girl. All right. If I set that up correctly, that run switch should make it start. Well, it shouldn't make it start, but it should allow it to run. Running. Now we'll come over here and flip the switch. And it shuts it off, so that's good. Okay, last thing left. I gotta make the throttle work. Throttle works on there, this thing can go for a ride. Fun trick is engine side because one of the sides of the belt is beveled. Put it over the small pulley, grab the big pulley like this, put my thumbs in the center, and kind of twist. And then I can put the belt over it. And typically, as long as I pulled it on hard enough here, it's pretty seamless. Come on, it's almost on. There it goes. And that's it, and it will self tension. Now I have the wheels up in the ground here so I can actually make sure they work. All right. Let's start it up and let's check the drivetrain and make sure everything does what it's supposed to do. Uh, here we go. Let's see if we get another one starter out of it again. <laughs> Not that time. Oh, I know why. Because the run switch was off. <laughs> one pull. All right. The front pulley has a clutch in it that will grab the belt. That's what we're looking for it to do. And then the back pulley will pull the belt in while the other one will ride up. So anyway, you'll see. Here we go. That sounds good. Even the chains are dead silent. They used to bang and pop and all kinds of stuff before, but they're not doing that anymore. I gotta figure out a way to connect the throttle linkage and all I have left is the uh, the old throttle plate from the old engine, the KT196, before I upgraded the carburetor on it. So I think I can probably put this on here. This has provisions for me to mount the throttle cable in and get it hooked back up. Whereas all that stuff is rusted or gone. The only thing I see here is, is the clip. That's not gonna do it, it's just not. So anyway, we'll get this bolted on somehow. We'll figure that out and I guess it's gonna take me a few minutes to come up with a little engineering on that. It's probably going to be some goofy linkages and stuff, but I'll get it sorted. Anyways, we'll be right back. Fix a little problem with the float leaking. It was from me flipping the engine upside down. It looked like it just got stuck, which was weird. Maybe there was some dirt in it. I don't know. I just blew it out, put it back together, and it's fine. So, no worries there. We did get the linkage put in. There it is right here. That seems to be working. And lastly. for a test ride. Oh boy! So quickly I went around and zip tied everything just to make sure everything was secure so we don't have any throttle cables getting tangled on things or wires getting hung up on stuff or boom of the duck trying to shit on my shoe but uh yeah we're about ready to go. Okay just have to knock it off that cinder block and this thing is a lot heavier than it used to be with this new engine on here. Ah, that's for sure. Boom. <laughs> All right well I guess it's time to uh Start her up and uh, blow around through there. I don't think we have enough time today, though, before it starts to get dark to get a proper speed test. But, uh, well, we'll see what we can do. If we can, we can, we can't, we can't. Otherwise, it's just going to be another video. Here we go. Hope it doesn't try to get away from me. <laughs>
This thing is a lot faster than it used to be. Holy shit. I would say I probably got up close to 50. And I had a lot more room to, if I had a lot more room to go, I would have gone a lot faster than that. But uh, yeah, we're definitely going to do a speed check on this thing. But otherwise, that's made maiden trip. It came back flawlessly. Nothing blew up. Although, you know what? Look at that belt. <laughs> it turned itself inside out. How the hell does that happen? I did hear a little bit of a buzzing sound that would explain what's going on down there. Let me get a closer look for you. Here's why we had a buzzing sound. Because the belt actually was starting to eat itself. And it was whipping that around and around and around. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why the belt did that. It looks like it's actually just worn to hell at this point. As it's just destroyed. But, okay. So we'll replace the belt on it, but otherwise... This wasn't even a new belt to begin with, by the way. This one was already stretched out. So I don't feel so bad that it did what it did, but I don't know why it turned inside out like that. That was really weird. Usually that means your pulleys are not in alignment or something, but mine look fine. All right, well, I'll put another belt on it. We're going to take it out to David's. We're going to play with it. We'll see what happens. And if it blows another belt, well, and if something else is wrong, we'll figure it out. <laughs> put in one more washer. You can see it's a shiny one in the middle. <laughs> and that got me nice and aligned. So now when I go look in here, the straight edge is... Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, I think we're good. We're ready to put this belt back on. I can't do it one hand, not yet anyway. Maybe someday. And you know what? Maybe I can. Let's see if that does it. <laughs> one hand belt installation. How about that? All right, well, killer. I guess it's ready to go back together. I guess it's ready to go to David's house, so that's next on the list. So for now, linky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bell. You see the updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links. We're going to come back with this thing next week with a proper speed test. And then we're going to start adding some upgrades to it. And we'll see what kind of difference they make as far as speed is difference. Uh, as far as speed difference is concerned, uh, one upgrade at a time. I'm curious, so we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> One more time. <laughs>
block away from home and it ate a belt. <laughs> it was not nice to that one at all. It was making a horrible squealing sound too. It sounded like there was a kid got run over. I'll have to uh, free it up from that pulley for sure. But yeah, I'm overpowering these belts. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, too much fun. It's highly competitive. I can actually, I can actually tie it up and uh, fix. Come on, battery! I know you got enough in you. Come on! Uh oh. <laughs>